Colin Mackay, the judge, coming into the ring now. And this is what we've been all been waiting for, the last of the groups, so we'll have the last of our finalists for tonight, best in show. So we're getting excited now, Jessica. Are you exhausted? <laughs> You've been <laughs> no, so busy, no, no. 200 cocker bitches today. So the adrenaline keeps you going, doesn't it? Now I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> now awards challenge certificates in 21 breeds across the group. Ladies and gentlemen, before we see the best of breed winners tonight in the Gundog group, please once again put your hands together for your judge, Mr Jock Mackay. Yes, I'm very pleased to see Jock here judging this. Uh, he and his wife have been breeders of pointers and visitors for many years, and uh, he's a real Gundag man. He's enjoyed the best of health in the last couple of years, so it's great to see him here. Now, the first of the best of breeds coming in. The Bracco Italiano put on a brilliant show last year and striding across the ring there. And there's the Brittany coming in, different stride, brisk stride for the Brittany. And the English setter. One of the favourites of the crowd, always in the Gundog group here at Crufts. And here's the German long-haired pointer coming in now. It's a relatively new breed in this country. The German short-haired pointer, of course, you've just seen in the gamekeepers' classes. And another very popular Gundog breed. And there's the German wirehead pointer. Wonderful three-striding dog. The heaviest of the setters, this the Gordon setter. Complete with drool. <laughs> and there's a very famous dog, that's Yogi, um, coming in with that marvellous stride. The Hungarian wire-haired Vizsla following the Vizsla. And here comes the Irish red and white, that's a beautiful, clear white background on those islands of red, chestnut red on his coat. The Irish setter, another breed that I'm sure there are many sitting on the sofa at home with you watching our coverage this evening. One of my favourite breeds, the Italian Spinoni, the yes. heaviest of the hunter pointed very, retrievers. Very specific top line and gait on it. And there's the little Koika Hund, Koika Hund from, uh, from Holland. The large Munsterlander. Another of the German breeds, the large Munsterlander. The pointer. No, oh, he's got a big cheer, they're one of the most stylish of gun dogs. The black and white pointer coming in. The Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Superb water dog with that characteristic coat. Another one with a great coat. It's the Curly Coated Retriever and coming in very nicely there. The Flat Coated Retriever. The Flat Coat, a roar from the crowd. This always a happy dog, free stood, tail wagging. And there, topping over 400, this golden retriever, and looks beautiful coming the in. The Labrador Retriever, just listen to the crowd. Of course, it's a gun dog crowd in tonight for the gun dog group, the best in show. They'll be rooting for these gun dogs all the way through. And there, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. With those little white paws. Uh, North America. And there's the tricolor American Cocker. Very stylish. Great striding the top line. The Clumber Spaniel. Specific gait, slight roll to it. Oh, Frank, you go. <laughs> yeah, here she goes. There's, there's my best breed winner. Um, this lovely bitch topping the breed today. Following the Cocker Spaniel, the English Springer Spaniel. And there's the field, a distinctive gait. To be dignified and slow with a good stride. Irish Water Spaniel. That fantastic coat on the Irish Water Spaniel, another happy dog, always with a thrashing tail. And that's come from Ireland too, Jessica. And there's the Sussex, and that looks very nice indeed. Lovely substance, good stride, and a beautiful colour. That's the Welsh lovely. Springer Spaniel. And the Welsh Springer Spaniel. Classic red and white colouring. The Spanish water dog. Yeah. And a little Spanish water dog. Yeah, Another one new to the cross ring, isn't it? Yeah, it's not long been here. Great versatility, no versatility in this breed. The and there's the Van Rana coming in, the grey ghost dog with his beautiful silver grey coloration. 4,604 4, gun dogs entered here at Cross today, and these are the best of breed winners. Jock Mackay going down his line up to take a look. He's seen them moving well, coming in, now he wants to get close up and take a look at what he's got to go over. It looks an impressive group coming into the ring, Frank. A lot of nice ones, uh, I think you'll give him plenty to go at. A very nice orange belt and English setter. The German long-haired pointer. 
And the German short head pointer with a full tail, of yeah, course, we'll, a youngster. We'll talk about that later. And there's the very nice German wire and a beautiful golden setter, that square outline. And there's the Hungarian visa. That was a that's a very famous show dog, the Hungarian wirehead visa. And this is the red and white setter. That looks. And there's his cousin in. next door. The, that's a very nice looking racy outline of the Irish. Oh, the Italian Spinoni with that slight dip in the top line. Yes, we'll talk about that which later. Which is correct. It's uh, yes. And the Goikohonje, Munsterlander, the pointer. Nice close ups. These you really get a feel for the dogs when you can see them close up like that. And the racy outline of the flat out there. A very nice, beautiful balance on that golden retriever, and I'm very pleased to see this is a chocolate winning. It's a long time since we've seen a chocolate Labrador winning best of breed of clubs. Little American Cocker, a stately Clumber, and there's, and there's your little Cocker bit. She looks wonderful. And a very nice English Springer and a very nice feel too. Now that's... <laughs> yes, Irish Water Spaniel eyeing that camera saying, I'm not sure if I like the look of you. But a very nice Sussex. Distinctive top line on the Welsh Springer. And there's the very elegant outline of the Vimerana. Now Jock Mackay. So the first of the gun dogs to be gone over tonight is the Bracco Italiano. This one, Axel, five-year-old dog champion, Axel del Monte Alago. Now, there's a, he comes from Rome in Italy. He is owned by Bitter Aaron Primavera and Signor Tripoli, bred by Ammanaria Mentuzzi and Pablo Paggio. Yes. Over 30 groups on the continent, a big winning Bracco this, and when they are good, they are superb. Yes, I remember you were enthusiastic I about this was. one. I was. Now, we've had also had an Italian judge today, Claudio Di Giuliani, came from Italy, and this dog's come from Italy. Fabulous dog, he's won all over the world, and just before Christmas won a big competition in America. What makes him so good? Well, he's got this wonderful elastic trotting, trotting action. It's so characteristic of the breed. Absolutely. Beautiful proportions and lines. And they should be lean and angular in the head, and this dog typifies that. Noble and graceful on the move. Stunning dog. The no, Brittany. So this one, Darai, Darai Dala Beaumont, three years old. He's called Monty. Uh, he belongs to Andrea Wilson and Michael Wilson, bred by Paul Duke and Kevin Gardner, uh, handled in the ring by Andrea tonight. They come from Newmarket in Suffolk. And this, winning his first CC, so that's a pretty good way to, to win your first at Crow. It is, isn't it? Now, this is, this is a breed which is a versatile hunt, point and retrieve, which means it can do everything needed to in the field. It can hunt the dogs, flush them out, uh, sent them and also retrieved them. Now they, they should be brisk in movement. They are very compact, big rib, short back, that little rounded croup we see there, and a brisk action. They're not free striding dogs like the Spinoni, they're brisk, and that's correct. The English setter, this one an orange Belton, show champion Mar uh, Mari Glenn Francesca Fenster, three years old. She's called Frankie. She belongs to Jane Dennis and Joy Field and was bred by Jane Dennis. Jane's handling in the ring tonight. They were, um, they got 13 challenge certificates to their credit, including winning best in show at the Breed Club Championship show. Yes, and this looked very well when it came. And this is an orange Belton. It comes from a very successful kennel, a Mari Glenn kennel. Um, they've had lots of top winners, and this looks another good one. So, one of the most elegant of the setters. We shouldn't talk about setters, uh, gun dogs being glamorous, but you know, the coloration in an English setter. This, the orange Belton, we get the blue Belton, the tricolour, but they are a very attractive breed. You see there, the lashing tail action, which is one of the setter characteristics. Beautiful hard top line, and we'll see lovely clean headlines. Nice dome skull and good length of foreface. And of course, many of these gun dogs carrying a decent amount of coat because they're intended to work in thick cover where they leave the coat behind rather than damaging themselves. Setters, of course, working out on the open moorland where they get torn to pieces by the heather. Now, this one is a German longhead pointer. Nancy von Auwelt, a German import bred by Gerd Hordbergs in Germany, uh, belongs to Larry Wilkes, who comes from Oxford. And Larry is a keen working man, and all of his dogs are dual-purpose dogs. So it's rather nice. Several of them in this group tonight are working gun dogs, so they are fit for function. Now, the, the German longhead pointer, relatively new, but they're taking off. They are, again, hunt, point and retrieve. They can do anything. Thing. So we've got this 
Strong, sturdy body, this level top line. Now the head plane is very important, a good length of foreface. You see the flat skull there, the high set ears, the head characteristic is very important. This is a solid brown. They also come in a sort of trout roan, which is an interesting coloration, and brown roan and, and brown and white. So, that looks like a very balanced gun dog on the move, very balanced indeed. Now, one you'll be more familiar with, the German short head pointer. This one, Caviani Toss at the top. A junior war winner, ju just 17 months old. He's known as Morgan and uh, was bred by, uh, was bred by uh, Pete and Sue Rose and owned by Adam Rose and Jane, James Gaffrey, judged by Mrs. Smith today. One CC and four reserve CCs. I'm guessing the first CC today. And he's the first CC today, and you see he's a relatively young dog, Jessica. He's 17 months old, and that accounts for him having a full tail. It was hitherto a, a previously traditionally docked breed, but now since the docking ban came in, the docking is not allowed except for dogs bred specifically for working. So some of the gun dogs can still be docked. Here we have the undocked German short head pointer. Oh, I think he looks very nice with his tail, actually. They're free striding. He's still, he looks a young dog in the body at the moment, but full of quality and very nice stride on him. <laughs> Playful, too. They're a wonderful breed to judge. Really unexaggerated, good confirmation. Now, from the youngster, to a dog that we've seen in this group ring at Crufts, I think three or four times now. Originally an import from Germany, bred by Ulrich Fredel, and uh, now champion, Dutch champion, Freddy von Kappelhoff at Bar Eve. He's world winner 2007, 2008, five years old now is Freddy. Judged uh, today by Zena Thorne Andrews, of course, belongs to Barbara and Sharon Pinkerton. He has 43 chance certificates and has been placed in the group here. So and he times. always puts up a very good performance in the group, a wonderful long stride, level top line. Look how he uses his hocks to drive himself along. We've just seen the German short hair. This is the wire head. It's not just the coat which makes them different. This breed is a little sturdier, a little more bone, a little more length of back to them. And of course, you've got this wonderful weatherproof wire coat on them. He looks very well tonight. He does, and he must be one of the most important dogs in the breed to come in in recent years. He's a full champion, Jessica, which means he's got a working certificate as well. The heaviest of the setters, the Gordon setter, that characteristic black and tan coloration. This one, show champion Lyric Black Ecstasy, eight years old nearly, this bitch. She's, I know, she's known as Kendall at home with Laurie Justice and was bred by Maureen Justice as well. Yes, wonderful bitch. She's a big winner, Jessica. She's had 39 CCs. I'll just tell the viewers you need three to become a champion. This has got 39. <laughs> that's, that's called an insurance policy. <laughs> she's eight years old. Now, this says they are a late maturing breeder. Young Gordon is gangly, he looks teenagerish, till he's about three years of age, but they last a long time. And does that look like an old dog? No, it does not. Look at that freedom. And you see they're fairly square. They are the strongest bone in all of the set set of breeds. And this rich black and tan marking is where they get their name from. The Gordon setter was bred on the Duke of Gordon's estate in Scotland. Now, this this one had best in show several years ago to me at the Gordon Setter Club, so I'm pleased to see she's still looking so good in the veteran class. Another big winning dog. In fact, I believe this year passed the record for the most best in show wins of any show dog in the United Kingdom. Yes. The Hungarian Wiesla, this one show champion and Australian champion, Hunger Guns bear it in mind. He was an Australian import. Seven years old now is Yogi. Uh, judged by Penny Williams today, belongs to Naomi Crowley and Catherine Armstrong and John Thurwell as usual handling in the ring. 64 challenge certificates and 45 groups. Yes, he's had a wonderful career. Uh, his um, Murray Armstrong saw him in Australia and decided to bring him over and he's been here and he's been a great success. Great show dog and a great sire. His outstanding feature is his movement, a fantastic striding dog. Now the Hungarian visa has this beautiful beautiful quality and colour in the coat, slightly greasy to the touch. And of course Yogi won the group here last year, didn't he? So we'll have to wait and see whether he can repeat that tonight. The Hungarian Wirehead Vishla, this one Leboshi Yena. 
uh, with a show certificate of merit, six years old this bit. Her name's Yenda at home. Uh, she own, she belongs to Jonathan and Diane Harry, who also bred her. They uh, don't have CCs yet in this country, do they? So she can't win chance certificates to become a champion. No, they've not got chance. Ah, oh, right. Just taking a little bit of um, bit overawed there by the proceedings. But again, the Hungarian wirehead Vizsla share a lot of similarities with the Hungarian Vizsla. And again, they've got that wire coat, that double coat, a soft undercoat and a harsh, wiry top coat. But again, there's, there's more to it than that in the differences. They're a bit sturdier, they're a bit longer, and they have a little more bone. Now, that's, that's beginning to settle and stride yes, out well. Yes, recovering nicely. Often, the first time a dog, especially a young one, comes into the group ring, it can be very overawing. Not just the carpet, the astroturf, but the noise and the tannoy and the people and the clapping. The Irish red and white sat setter, uh, Laurie Bay Ocean Sunset, this three and a half year old dog called Brodie. Uh, they've come from Nottinghamshire today, owned by Mark and Wendy Taylor and bred by V and Tony Gallagher. Yeah, a wonderful shot of its head there. The Irish red and white is heavier than, than the red setter, the Irish setter, its cousin. A bit more bone, a bit more substance and not as racy. Now it's hard to believe that we've got such popularity in the, in the Irish setter Yet this breed, which is its cousin and has the same taproot stock, was almost extinct for a while. Only a few breeders kept it going. Now, look at that lovely coloration. White background, islands of red on it, so it's uh, very nicely marked. Looking in fine form tonight, too, winning first CC today, so on the way to becoming a champion, which is lovely. And we see he's quite a solid body dog. Uh, Tail wagging the whole time, which is always nice to see. Now, as you just pointed out, the much more popular cousin, the Irish setter, show champion and international multi-champion, Sumaric Shadow of Mr. Jingles. Jingles, five years old, he's a dog, and he's owned by Alex and Wim Lawness from Belgium, bred by Sue Morris. Yes, and uh, he's a very successful dog on the continent, and he's been over here and got his English title as well, so he's, he's done, done very well indeed. Huge amount of Irish setters here today, and again, he's top the lot, which is a great achievement at Crubs. Now, this, we've just seen the more solid Irish red and white. We see here a racier style of dog. The lovely curves, the top line falling slightly from the withers to the tail set, beautiful clean head, almond-shaped eyes, very stylish on the move, and that beautiful chestnut-coloured coat. He looks very well, doesn't he? It does look like a racier version, but they still have great substance, don't they? They're, I was at ringside today, and they're, they are they're solid dogs, They must too. have depth of body, depth of chest and heart room to make them fit for function. Now we move on to the breed that I first started showing many years ago, the Italian Spinoni. This one, Riccini Capelli. Uh, known as Roma, three-year-old bitch. They were judged by Nicola Spencer, who I will embarrass her by saying I remember when she was yay high to my knees <laughs> when, she, when I was back in the breed, owned by Ellen Plazier and bred, of course, by Suzanne Whittingham. And it's Suzanne who's handling her here, so she's very successful, lives up in Northumberland, and uh, this is one of her progeny. So this, winning its first CT today, now it's a very specific breed, as you'll be able to see. When we see it in top line, don't think that it's got a weak that top line is a desirable. The stand is very specific. It should fall to the 11th vertebrae and, and then, then from rise the 11th again. Rise. And, and then rise to the croup and then fall again. So it's down, up, and down. And they've got thick, thick skin and this harsh, wiry top coat. And they've got expressions which should be almost human. Oh, they're so gentle to look at. And as you say, an almost human expression. They've come all the way from Holland to compete. So. We wish them well. Now, the little Quaker Hunja. This one, Eunosta Trixie, is five years old. Uh, she was judged by Zena Thorne Andrews today, who found her best of breed. And uh, she belongs to Suzanne Wybrow, who also bred her. They come from Peterborough in Cambridge. Now, this is an interesting little breed. It's one of the native breeds of Holland. It was thought it comes from the, the Royal House of Orange. Now, it, it used to work as a decoy dog. It didn't actually work with gun, with people with guns, but it used to decoy the dogs by wagging their tails furiously.
furiously and the Dutch were attracted down these canals and then into, into the traps. But uh, anyway, it's one of the native dogs of Holland and they love this chestnut red and white coloration and the white band, the, the black strands of hair in its ears are a breed specific feature. 16 inches maximum size and they shouldn't be too heavy, they're a light, nimble breed. That looks like a dog that would do well in agility, don't you think? Mm. Now another one of the German breeds, this is the large Munsterlander, Jordi van der Stromper Powder from Kikada. Three years old, this dog, his name's Jordi, uh, he, uh, he belongs to Mary Spence and was bred by Linda Spargen Bram, so I assume he was imported. They live in uh, Bedworth in Warwickshire and he's handled in the ring by Donna Kirkwood tonight. Yes, and this, this looks a very workmanlike dog. They're again a breed which are hunt, point and retrieve, they can do everything. Now if you go and have a day judging the large monster lands, he really is, how, how wonderful temperament and how, div how, how, devote, how devoted their owners are to them. And he's trotting out very well here. He's stopped there because there's been a little disturbance in the ring which is going to be dealt with quickly. Yeah. And the dog quite unfazed by it all. Um, Colin, oh look. Jock Mackay very nicely taking her back to the beginning saying, we'll have a minute for everything to calm down, let everybody settle down, then you can have your run again. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, of course, terribly unfair on the poor Munster Lander owner. <laughs> Now, the dog wagging his tail, ready to go again. The what a fantastic temperament test yeah. for that dog. It's running around the ring, suddenly a whole gang of people rush in, and he just says, fine, we'll go again. Now, we see the, the, the very typical head, Jessica, this clean head planes, lovely dark eyes on it, and the head flat. Oh, Huge yeah. roar from the crowd, yes, the appreciation of, of their sportsmanship. Yeah. Beautiful dog. Driving out and still yes. showing himself. And you see the, the top the top line breed specific, which should be level or a slight slope from the withers. So he's gone very well. I think that's quite enough entertainment for the evening. Let's get back to the dogs. <laughs> the pointer. This one is Tom Lowe, night and day. F uh, Fugue is four years old, she is a bitch, and uh, she belongs to Karen Sillance, who also bred her. They come from Northampton today to win their first challenge certificate. Now, the pointer entry is always huge and very well supported. The ring is always six deep. They must be thrilled to win the first CC and best of breed across today. And the, the, the pointer should be a series of symmetrical flowing curves. They're a really aesthetic breed. So, oval bone, clean action and a lashing tail. And they should have a slight concave quality to the mu muzzle, which lifts the nose to their scenting power. It's a very characteristic head, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This one's striding out nicely. Tail doesn't want to be too long, does it? No, it's a fantastic they're, they're, action. It used to be called a beasting tail, so, and they should lash it from side to side. Now, one of the heaviest of our retrievers, this is the Chesapeake Bay, Devonshot Indian Goes Brave. Three and a half years old, he's a dog, he's known as Teague at home with Joe Nash, uh, and they come from Dorchester in Dorset. Bred by Wendy and Dave Howard, judged by Janet Morris today, of course, a doyen of the breed, awarding this one his first CC. Yes, now this is the, a, lot of sub, a lot of substance in this breed. The big ribs, strong bone and feet, some strength in the head and the coat texture are all important. It's very characteristic and it's a slight wave and oily, slight wave and very waterproof. Oily and it's given waterproof. They used to work in the icy waters of North America so they had to be equipped for that. So, and again, the underline, very, very important. And again, but all, all important is that coat, which makes them fit for purpose, fit for function, to work in that icy, icy climate. Now here's another dog with a very characteristic coat, the curly-coated retriever, tr retriever, show champion Milanis Ripple. Three years old, judged by Nick Waters today, and uh, this one owned by Elizabeth Cooper, who also bred her. They come from Lincolnshire, and uh, they were winning the, their fifth CC today. And I think uh, his favourite occupation, as it should be, her favourite occupation, my pardon, yes. uh, is retrieving. Yes, just, just <laughs> right. Now, this one's a black. They also come in liver. This is another retrieve. This is the tallest of the retrievers, but they also have a big, big barrel ribs, good chest on them. 
But above all, they want this astrakhan curl of a coat. It's that which gives them their name, and it's very important. And of course, it gives them a waterproof quality again. A lovely, clean head. They want some length in the foreface, because that's what helps them to retrieve their game. They all, don't they? They're, they're carrying game. They don't have to carry a fully grown, probably male pheasant or a duck or something like that. They need a good, strong underjaw, good jaw muscles. Another breed that's... The flat-coated retriever, Ballyreen Mackenzie, two-year-old bitch known as Kenzie, belongs to Christine Young, who also bred her. They've come all the way from Scotland, handled by Frank White in the ring this evening. 358 flat coats here, two judges, and this is their choice for best of breed. So, there we are. This is the raciest of the retrievers, which means they're a bit more streamlined, not as compact and perhaps not as substantial, but they do need a good spring of rib to give them heart and lung room, very nice free stride, and lovely clean moulding to the skull. This is black. You sometimes see the liver ones, but what a lo lovely stride this is. It's always delightful to watch them in the breed rings too, because um, generally flat coats are free stood, which means no hands on, the handler just stands there with the lead and a little bit of bait to attract the dog's attention. They're always focused and And they never stop wagging. wagging the tail. They're the Beautiful happiest of dogs. the rich, absolutely. Big smiling faces on those and, long And a lot noses. of the flat coat people work their dogs. They're very good dual purpose gun dogs. Now always topping the entry numerically, the golden retriever, Jaco's Nordic Charm has won through today. At Six years old, this dog, Emil. He belongs to Jarl Kordal and Vibek Olsen, and they've come all the way from Norway. He was homebred by them. He's winning his first UKCC today. Right now, he looks beautiful, this dog. Beautifully balanced, which means he's got good, good length of leg to balance his body depth and very nice body shape, striding out well. They are a fantastic breed, you know, for Temple. We've seen them tonight on, on the the southern group working in their obedience to space. But look at the lovely balance on that. You can just see that it's right, it's the right shape. I met the owner in the hotel yesterday and he said he was really looking forward. This is, oh, this is Norway's top retriever and he was really looking forward. Hasn't he had a good he time? He certainly yes. has. Now another of our most popular breeds, the Labrador show champion, Nalken Way Out West, who has a junior warrant at two years old. This dog's called Chulu. He belongs to Alan, Jackie and Rebecca Hodge, and uh, they also bred him, so I'm sure they're proud as punch today when he won his seventh CC. Yes, and, I'm, yeah, he's a, it, and as I said, he's a chocolate. We don't often see chocolates topping them here at Ruffs. That means it's that rich brown color. Now the coat texture, all important. It has to be a double coat, hard on top, soft protective undercoat, and this otter tail, a thick, fairly short tail. They are a short, compact, short couple dog, and he's striding out well. That one looks very unexaggerated, just the right balance Again, there between a strong workman-like animal, but still something that looks like it could work all day long in the all, field. All of the retrievers we've seen tonight are balanced. They I mean they've got good length of leg to balance their depth of body, and that's sometimes missing in the retrievers. He's one of the most unusual of the retrievers. This, the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Uh, Danehaven, Detroit. Four-year-old dog. His name's Kenzie. He belongs to Christine Powley, who also bred him. They've come from Norfolk today. Of course, it's not a CC breed, so they can't win challenge certificates to make up champions, but that doesn't stop them enjoying showing their dogs. But what a very nice shape this dog is, and a lovely, lovely head. Some width in the skull, nice stop and eyes. Now, these are another decoy dog, Jessica. Their way of working is quite unique. They used to do it. They used to, the gunmen used them to on the sides of the lake and they used to bark and wag their tails and attract the ducks. And then the ducks came in to, were inquisitive and then they were targets for the gunmen. So, uh, All I can say is that means ducks must need serious IQ tests. Now the coat again very important, the white marking on the chest and the feet and sometimes a desired white tip on the tail which was said the wagging tail attracted the attention of the ducks. So. So you say they're easy, easy prey, do so you think, Jessica? <laughs> the American Cocker Spaniel, show champion, Afterglow, Veronica Mars. Um, 18 months old, only 18 months old, and topping the breed here at Crofts did Ronda. Belongs to Mike Gadsby, Jason Lynn and Gilda Ricks, of course, bred by them as well, and handled in the ring tonight by Jason Lynn. And we see that the American Cocker has a sloping top line. It slopes from the withers to the tail and this beautiful dome to the skull and a plush, velvety quality to the muzzle. Now, this has had a good fortnight, Jessica, because I judged their 
Club Club Show last week, and this was my Best in Show winner. And he's also gone Best of Breeder Craft, so the owners will be very happy. The beautiful quality, and we'll see when she moves. She holds that sloping top line on the move. It's a fairly high set tail, carried just above the level of the back, and this lovely free stride and hard top line. And That's one of the breed specifics. And this was your breed, wasn't it? Yes, I have uh, had them for 30 odd years or so, so uh, I'm still very fond of them, of course. Uh, still relatively young, but I had a great career so far. The Columbus Spaniel show champion Vanatonia, you bet I am. He's three years old as Rupert. Belongs to Lee Cox and Tom Isherwood from Highbridge in Somerset, and they also bred him. And I believe Lee's parents had Columbus for many years, and Lee's picked them up. Now, this is a super dog. I've seen him around the rings at shows, and glorious to watch on the move, usually. Yes, beautiful. This is one of the most substantial of the Spaniels, and they have to be fairly long in the body, fairly low to the ground, but still retain activity and good, good reach and drive. And of course, because they have this length of body and the substance, you may get a slight roll in the top line, which is thought to be typical for the breed. And we see there the good width of skull. This one, lemon markings on the white coat, which is the most desirable. We sometimes see a few orange patches, but the lemon and white is the most desirable marking. Very nice quality. Now, other than giving the name of this Cocker Spaniel, I'm going to be quiet. It was your breed. You judged them today. Show champion Lucisa touched the sky. Three and three quarter years old, belongs to Sue and Annie Kettle, who also bred her. So, yes, you know, well over 400 Cockers today. So we've had a marvelous time. I judged the bitches, and this was my best bitch. A very nice dog one for the dog judge. And of course, we agreed to differ, and we had the referee. So Jock's already seen this one and uh, she was best of breed. She's, for me, a beautiful bitch. We've seen a sloping top line in the American Cocker. Here we should have a level top line and a slightly rounded bottom. This bitch has the most wonderful body, big ribs, lots of bone and substance, but beautiful quality in the head, and she trots about in a very merry Cocker action, which is much desired, and that lovely wagging tail. She looks a picture there, I'm glad she's going well. Real cobby little cocker spaniel looking absolutely superb to see. Full of cocker type. The English Springer Spaniel, this one graceful lines. This is show champion Trimere Talking Point of Alen Alini. Three years old, this dog is known as Eric, and he belongs to Anthony Allen and Richard Bott, was bred by Anne Corbett. Yes, Anne Corbett's trimeres have been very successful. And here's one she bred, which has won well all last year and taken best of breed today. This is a racier type of dog, so they've got more length of leg, a little longer in the back than a cocker, and they should have this wonderful forward reach when they go. So this is a very stylish dog. Now, these have a bit more width to the skull. Strong in the foreface for retrieving, and a very good forward swing to his stride. It's a liberal white. We see them in black and white, but also in tricolour as well. Now, he's going well, and again, that low set tail, wagging, that's typical cocker action and temperament. The English Springer Spaniel. Now the characteristic lines and head of the field spaniel. Show champion and Australian champion, Mon Mon I, this writing is difficult to read, so there's your affix, Manuga Field of Dreams. Uh, Velvet, she's called. Um, she's five years old. She belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Norbury and was bred by Steph Stephanie, Matthew, uh, Stephanie and Matthew Stilcher in Australia. So. Yes, and this is a breed which was also extinct, was almost extinct between the two world wars, and only a handful full of breeders kept it going. Now, they are a longer bodied dog and they should have this slow, dignified stride, but above all, they have to have beautiful quality in the head. This leanness under the eyes and chiseling under the eyes and beautiful almond shaped eyes. You see there are different proportions and uh, Lovely, lovely, clean stride. And the head plane's very different, not only the skull with respect to the nose. The field spaniel. 
Now the Irish Water Spaniel, though, the incredible curly coat. This one, show champion, Irish champion, and I think Swiss champion. Gatewood invitation of Colleenville. Uh, they were judged today by Michael Quinney. This one belongs to Norman, Heather, and Colleen Large, and was bred by Pat Wake and Shirley Whitwell. They come from Northern Ireland today, and they won their fifth CC, 20 groups in Ireland. So a dog with a, quite a record in the show ring. And Fitch, we rather see this beautiful liver color and the lovely coat text. There should be loose curls there with an oily quality to them. But under that coat, they should be big and barrel ribbed. This one's striding out nicely. The tail, we'll see that only about three inches of curl on the tail and they're bare, which is a breed specific feature. They've got a lovely clownish quality to their temperament. You can really see that, Absolutely. can't you, with the tail going and the ears flying. They do look like clowns. The lovely russet colour of the Sussex Spaniel, show champion Belcam Willie Go Far. <laughs> Delightful name. Four year old dog called Tog. He belongs to Liz Bow and was also uh, bred by Liz as well. And they've come from North Hans, judged by Joy Hartley today. And that beautiful golden liver colour, which is right for the breed, with golden tips to the coat. And you see the incessant tail action of a dog. He's really enjoying it. And that's a breed, a spaniel feature, which we like. And when you get up close to a Sussex, you really appreciate how solid these little dogs are. Yeah, now this, this dog is um, about four years old and he's just coming to his peak. They are again a slow maturing breed. They want a lot of substance in the body and in good bone in their, in their legs. And they should have this wonderful clean action and a very nice tail action here. So that's a very nice dog. I think he's looking really well tonight. So <laughs> Lovely tail waggle. In fact, a whole bottom waggle for the judge. Now we're drawing towards the end of our group now, the last few dogs to be seen. This one, the Welsh Springer Spaniel, show champion Hill Park Royal Gold, made up today was Hazel at three and a half years old, belongs to John and Anne Walton, who also bred her. Now, that you, we've already seen the English Springer. The Welsh Springer is a little bit different. It's about one inch smaller, 19 inches maximum height for the Welsh Springer. And they only come in this rich chestnut red and white. So the head's a little bit lighter than the English Springer. But again, cleanly chiseled under the eyes. And the top branch is breed specific. We should have a rise over the loin and a fall to a lower set tail. And this is striding out nice, nicely here. Yeah. And very happy temperament. That's a breed which has improved in the temperament. It used to be a little bit diffident about 20 years ago. The breeders have worked hard and they're much more outgoing now. A little tick tock tail mm. look. <laughs> Now, a relatively new breed for us to see in the group ring at, cr at Crust, the Spanish Water Dog. This is an international and an Irish show champion, Hollutrix Zula of Goldfly, known as Zula at home. She's six years old. She belongs to Sonia Ann Grief, and she was bred by, it says, uh, bred by Berry. It just says Berry. <laughs> they come from East Sussex. They were judged by Chris Bexton today. Of course, no CCs for the Spanish Water Dog yet. Now, this is a relatively newcomer to the show rings in this country, but cute hugely popular in Spain, but they are a very versatile dog. Not only do they work to the gun as retrievers, but they'll also work as water dogs, bringing in boats and bringing in nets, and as sheep herders. They're very popular in their native Spain for working on the farm. Again, that coat, very important. It's a curly coat of good texture, and they grow quite prolifically, and they're clipped off about once a year to keep them down. This is a, looks relatively newly clipped, this one. Now, the final dog in our, in our group tonight, this is the Weimarana, Gunalt Glamopus. Kitty's three years old. She belongs to Colin Smith and Michael Ward, bred, of course, by the famous Gunalt kennels of Stephen and Patsy Hollings. She's got two CCs, so waiting for that all-important third, judged by Eileen Gates today. They're a very elegant breed. They should be, have a gaunt quality to them, but above all, they have this lovely silver-grey coloration. So this is a, a very feminine bit. We see the chiseling under the eyes, that good length of foreface, the high set ears, and they're not. They shouldn't be compact and cobby. They should have some length to them. So we also see them the long-haired variety, um, same colour but longer tails. So there we are, striding up nicely. She's still a relatively young bitch. Uh, the last of our gun dogs this evening for Jock Mackay, the Weimarana. So.
going to take a look at that lineup first. A careful reminder for himself. 31 of them, that's a lot of dogs to go through. Needs a little reminder of, okay, who did I like? Who can I leave behind? A difficult choice of a group of this sort well, of quality. There were some very nice ones. I think you'll have uh, you to think hard to get them down to the last eight, which is what he'll be thinking about now. Jock's a real uh, stockman. He was a national hunt and flat race jockey. He's uh, very keen on horses, and he and his wife, Maureen, very keen horse people. So they know confirmation and movement. Oh, I'm delighted. He's pulling out the Bracco Italiano. And the English setter. And the yogi, the Vizsla, comes out. Into the final eight again. Can they win the group again? A long walk down the line now. It's the flat coat retriever coming out. Yeah. Yeah. The and the American yeah. cocker. You'll be thrilled to see that. And the cocker's oh, out too. Oh, your cocker bitch is nice. there. Delightful. The cocker's back. And, and he's the taking the Weimaraner. And the Weimaraner. Seven, seven finalists. So there we are. Um, so the other best of breeds will now leave the ring. So as our shortest of Gundog breeds move to the back of the ring, each will be moved again. Jock Mackay has his final seven in the gun dog group, the last group for tonight, and the first to run is the Bracco Italiano. Big winner in Europe, big winner in America, and this wonderful elastic gait. Come all the way from Italy to compete tonight, and looking an absolute picture. My goodness, I would love it if that won the group. <laughs> Only very stylish, orange belt and English set of a top winning kennel, the Murray Glen kennel, beautiful molding to the head, this lashing tail action which is typical of all the set of breeds, beautiful balance and top line on it. Yogi, the top winning show dog of all time with the most best in show wins in the UK of any show dog, taking his final run. His wonderful length of stride, very accurate on the move. This gaunt quality in the oily skin and that rich coloration for the breed. Now there's the flat coat striding up well, the raciest of the retrievers. Lovely clean action coming towards us. Lashing tail, which is typical of the flat coat. He's the raciest of the retrievers, but he's still got substance under that coat. The American Cocker Spaniel. Look at the style on that. The Russian tail, hard sloping top line, really striding out well. Perfect tail carriage for the breed, only 18 months of age. Frank's lovely little Cocker Spaniel bitch. Show champion Luigi's a touch of the sky. Unexaggerated, cobby, short and compact, a lovely model for Cocker type. And then finally, the Weimar on the bitch, Gunnolt Glamopris. The grey ghost dog, which should be, have a gaunt polish of the head and this lovely coat and skin. Uh, she's just beginning to flag a little bit there, but uh, still a young bitch and uh, a lot of quality to her. So Jock Mackay walking back down the line, the boards are out. Who is he going to give the group to for 2010? Remember, this will be the last of our finalists going into the best in show. And it is going to be the Hungarian Wiesler, champion and Australian champion, Hungergun, bear it in mind, wins the group again for the second year running. So that's two that we've got, the Pharaoh Hound and this Wiesler. And there the English setter in second place. The American Cocker goes into third and the flat coated retriever into fourth place in the Gundog group. So there Yogi wins the Gundog group again. There. Lovely picture there of the flat coat taking group four. The other competitors to huge applause leaving the ring. We have four very stylish movers in all the filling all the places, Jessica. So but there he is, Yogi. <laughs> the 
Chris Sutter's <laughs> going mad. Uh, I got second in the group, Mum. And she did look very well tonight and, and put up a very good performance, as they all did. Now, you, you won the group last year, Jessica, and I wonder if you might go one better this year. Well, that has to be why he's here, the same as the Pharaoh Hunt. They almost got there. Can they go all the way tonight? Because we haven't got very long to wait to see. They accept the presentation of their group trophy. Rosette to second in the group, the English setter. Group three, the American, American Cocker Cossack. taking Group 3 for Jason Lynn and Mike Gadsby. Just 18 months old, that bitch. Now. And the flat-coated retriever. The Christine Young, the Frank White handling, taking Group 4. But there's our winner on the lap of honour. Yogi winning the Gundog Group for the second year in a row. Will he go all the way? What a fantastic group. Well done, Jess. Well done, Frank. And uh, that means that with the selection there of the Hungarian Vizsla to go into the Best in Show, it means we have an entirely new breed going on to the Best in Show register because none of the seven who have qualified have ever won the show before. So Best in Show will be a new breed for us here at Croft. Well, that's the Gondor Group, our seventh wonderful group this year. And we continue in the ring with yet more Gondogs because we're going to have a Gondog display. This is by the Kipperidge Gondogs, Adrian and Caroline Slater, uh, coming into the ring. And I'm going to let the arena tell you the story when they come in.